Oh, Sandy! <laughs> Save me a perch. Yes, it's been a while. Thought you'd migrated. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Flexi working these days. Yep. Oh, loving all these ticket options. You might say I'm as free as a bird. So where are you off to? Lunch. With a client, then into the office for a bit of a brainstorm. Quite the high flyer. <laughs> I've got a couple of meetings, popping to an exhibition, then a few drinks with friends. Oh, nice. Bit of a goals night out, huh? No <laughs> way! <laughs> Get more out of going in with our flexible ticket options. Southwestern Railway. Spread your wings. Hey everyone, it's uh, Ayesha here from God FM. Hope you're all doing very well. Uh, that was my just very quick intro, just to say I'm back. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, sorry it's been so long. <sighs> I've just had so many little things going on. I've had such an attack from the enemy and uh, it's, it's really, really been very tricky indeed. But, you know, the Lord is very real. And, uh, <laughs> well, I thought I'd do a sermon today, probably later. Um, more about the glory of the Lord and uh, His Majesty and uh, and how we can trust in Him. You know, um, there's so many things that uh, we're going through, each one of us. I know that we're all going through our own trials. So, you know, um, when you are going through this, these trials, I want you to know something. If God is for you, who can be against you? I'll tell you this again. If God is for you, who can be against you? Today is the 29th of May, 2023. I've been offline for a few weeks now, dealing with a data attack. And uh, I do know who it is. And I also know that the Lord is going to make them pay this time, because it's happened to me before. But... Um, Yes, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46, colon 1. Why is it so important to know this? Well, because when you're in the trial, sometimes you just can't see the wood for the trees and you don't know where to turn. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. Now let me tell you something else. As a child of God, yeah, provided you have fully surrendered everything over to the Lord with any problems, etc. If you've sinned, you need to repent. Yes, as long as you've got the Lord with you. Whew, and the Lord knows everything that's going on in your head and your heart and all those desires and lusts of the flesh, all of those things. Um, if you don't surrender to God, then he can't take over. So, <laughs> so this week, um, yeah, the Lord said, uh, I've got it now. I've got everything. It's all sorted. It's okay. I said, I'm okay. Thank you, Lord. So, we'll see what happens now because I don't have to do anything according to the Lord. Apparently, I must just be still and watch and see the amazing miracles the Lord can perform. You see, what we have is we have two teams on earth. We have a team of people who work for God, and we've got a team who don't work for God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. The Lord says, I am in Exodus 3 colon 14. My eyes couldn't read that. What does this mean? Well, he's the everlasting God. He's the beginning, the middle and the end. He's eternal. This means that nothing can happen without the Lord's authorship because he is the author of the book of life, but of everything. And even Satan has to answer to God. There's nothing above God. 
So we, whatever your problems are, if you've got the Lord with you, you can surrender it all to him. You know, when the Lord came to rescue us in Egypt, it says in the Bible that he heard us from heaven crying. And it made him upset. So he came to our rescue. So this week, I had some really horrendous things. So I just got on my knees and I just prayed to God. I cried and I cried and I prayed. I said, God, you please got to sort this out now once and for all. And I poured everything out. I just completely felt that there was no other way unless God took over. And he did. Within seconds of this prayer, he took over. And I knew it. And so did the enemies. Let me tell you, it's great to have the Lord with you. (laughs) May everyone bow before the Lord and sing his holy praises. May everyone acknowledge our Father in heaven for an amazing God who he is. Righteous, kind, full of grace, mercy, love, kindness, tenderness. He's got you in your, in his right hand. He will not ever let you go. No man can pluck you out of his hand, as it tells me in the Bible. He says, do not be afraid. I am with you. Isaiah 43, colon 5. The Lord is with me, and I will not be afraid in Jeremiah 20, colon 11. So, what I got from the Lord is, do you trust me? I was like, yeah, okay. He said, no, trust me. Everything is with me now. I walk before you. It's about faith as well. Because if you haven't got faith, then it shows that you don't trust God. So it's a bit like a chicken and egg. So I'm finding. <laughs> You know, I just want you to know how much I love you all. I'm so sorry I've been away. I've just missed you so very much. Uh, but I couldn't, couldn't get anything, any of my technical things to work. And so it just affected me in so many ways. But I want you to listen to this. John 1, the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, this also means that it cannot comprehend it. So when you are walking around as a child of God, it says you mustn't hide your lamp in the cupboard. So when you're doing the work of God, uh, anyone, this is everybody, okay, all of you guys, when you're spreading the gospel, you're encouraging people to come to Jesus, you're shining your lamp. And so the darkness doesn't like it, and it will retaliate and it will attack. Um and this can happen in many ways. If you've got any weak areas, it will come that way to see if it can reduce your armor. You see, when it says we need the full armor of God in Ephesians, it's not uh, anything new, but it's very important for you to understand we need the full armor of God. Because if you haven't got it, then the enemy can get in. So you need the, all of these bits of armor. And I'll go through those in a second. Well, I'm really in, on a roll now. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. In nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, colon 6 to 7. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and my song I praise him with my song. Exodus 15, colon 11. Who is like you, Yahweh, among gods? 
among the gods. He was like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. For I know the thoughts that... I've got to try and read this. I'll just get this down. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and, uh, yeah, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, colon, 1. What's this mean? Well, all things are possible through God. I can tell you that because I've been through all of the various testings and trials in my life. And, uh, and all I can say is it's it's not pleasant, but there's always something really good at the end of it. So before God can promote you, he often has to put you through trials. So I'm finding. <sighs> you know, he also says about making um, the, the crooked path straight. You see, this is another part of it, I also believe. So in your life, when you're walking along, sometimes we can end up on the wrong path and not realize it. And the only way he can get us off that is to draw our attention to it. And the only way to draw our attention to it is to to allow certain things to happen in your life. Like in my instance, for my, uh, you know, here I am doing my work, so comfortable I was. And then it came this trial, and it's renewed me in every way. Number one, through fasting, I feel renewed and in strength. Number one, I've lost lots of weight. Uh, number two, I've also looked much younger because when you fast, you also uh, it does something with the skin and tightens everything up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and my heart is at peace. And through the trials, when, when all of these things happen, you can, you can find yourself in a really sort of difficult spot. You know, you're thinking, oh, what's going on? And how do I get through this? And uh, sometimes we'll be praying and we'll wonder why, why is God not doing anything, you know. But God allows these things to happen to us for various reasons. Uh, why? Because I believe that God is testing each one of us on our faith. This is what I believe. And so, whew. what else was I going to tell you? Oh, yes, don't forget that God will pay you back double for your trouble. Happy days. God will restore me double for my trouble. Zechariah 9, colon 12. What does this mean? Well, every trial that you go through, where you lose things, God will make sure that you're paid double for your trouble. Yeah. So for in, in my situation, uh, I've had people attack me and destroy my businesses. Yeah. And I know that God will restore me double for my trouble. Yes, when the time is right. But this time it will be for his purpose, for his glory. Not for my own glory, but, you know, when this happened before, I wasn't doing the work of the Lord then. And so God let it happen. And it was all a mystery until it happened again. And now all the pieces have come together. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Um, what else can we do? Well, I think it's important that we take... A sort of a recheck on ourselves regularly. So, oh, who you're hanging around with is a, a very important. Um, I, I've discovered this. Um, who you help as well is also another thing um, because Satan will send in people to pretend be your friend and they secretly want to destroy you. You know, in the stories of David, well, the stories of David are really just to give you a guideline on what to expect in this world. Uh, really, it is. You know how David cries out to God in the Psalms, and he says, Oh, I just don't know what to do. There's some people all around me, and it's just so horrible. And uh, 
So, you know, it's very hard for him. And, and you hear all of his crying to the Lord. And what this means is he's been really, really troubled. You know, he's in the, in the Psalms of David. He says, all my enemies are all over me. They're all over trying to do things. So for, for, for David, this was very, very hard indeed. You know, it is. It's, it's not easy. <sighs> so I'm just trying to put some music on for us. Totally down in a different room at the moment. All technical stuff, I'm afraid, at the moment. It's all good fun. Um, what else can I tell you? The sun doesn't shine without the Lord. And the sun shines on, on those people who are evil as well as good. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, God lets the, 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 the bad people um, also get, you know, the bit of sunshine and everything. So this is pretty horrendous because sometimes you can't tell, you know, like, I don't know about you, but I've watched it where my enemies succeed after they've tried to destroy me. Yeah. <coughs> and I thought, mm, what's going on here? And I've just put it to the side and thought, well, maybe, maybe God will deal with it later. Well, that's precisely right. He will. Um, why does God let these things happen? Well, because it's for his glory and for your testing, I believe. And then once you've been tested, the Lord can, uh, can see your faith and, uh, because he can see what's going on in your heart. Uh, don't forget as well that um, we also have uh, situations where some people turn away from God in their tests and trials where they go, oh, you know, if God let that happen to me, he doesn't love me. Well, no, of course not. God loves you so much. He's never, ever going to let you go. You just have to trust him. It's a test. And actually, the only way through it is with God, because if you haven't got God, you'll never make it. So this is when you really have to get up close and personal with the Lord. Um, in Ephesians 6.12, it tells me about the armor of God, um, 6.10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your God and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit in, on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Now, when you read this, it does feel like it's written for us. And I think it is. I really do. Hmm. The mystery of the gospel is very interesting also, isn't it? Don't you think? You see, the mystery of the gospel, I think, is so very interesting because I believe that uh, the gospel is a mystery. 
because the truth in it is is only revealed to the children of God, people who seek God out and show themselves worthy. So it also says, whatever you ask in my name, I will gladly give it to you. So if it, if it is wisdom you require, as it tells us in James 3, 1, I think, 1, 3, uh, you will surely get it. Faith, faith, wisdom, definitely wisdom. You see, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And when you realize that God is in control of every single little teeny weeny bit of life, then uh, no, nothing can frighten you. Um, that's what the Lord has shown me. And I want to show that to you. So no matter what's happening, you must know that God is in control of everything. The trial and the test that you might be going through may just be something that the Lord wants to see how you react, whether you come to Him, whether you trust in Him. You see, the thing is, if you don't trust in God, then what's the point in believing in God? You've got, you've got to have both. You've got to believe in God, you've got to put your trust in Him, but also you've got to have a relationship with the Lord. And, and, and this is about talking to God, having a one-to-one. I have to always talk about this. You see, I talk to God all the time. And I hear God speak to me. And some people, they don't like that. You know, they say, oh, it's, God's not talking to you. Mm-hmm. I go, well, that's okay. You, you know, you can believe what you want to believe. I don't mind. It's all right. Um, but, um, and this, anyone can have as well, if they really, really search for it uh, and really want it. So... You know, it's about getting on your knees. Also, I wanted to discuss the wickedness of the people who are our enemies. Now, they're also the enemies of God. So this is very interesting because it means that God knows who your enemies are before you know. I think that's very interesting, don't you? That the Lord is fully aware of what your enemies are up to and he knows what their plans are you know I have it where the Holy Spirit warns me of things and uh, each time it's warned me I've listened and it saved me from colossal problems (laughs) it's truly I wonder. Our Lord is so amazing. His name deserves to be praised all over the world by every single person. And if it is not, then, well, they don't deserve to be a part of the kingdom because they don't trust God, they don't love God, they don't want God, so God doesn't want them. But also these people who are wicked... They have their own sense of righteousness. I was thinking about how come there are these people, you know? What is the main thinking? Well, what's going on here with the wicked people? How does it work? Because they can be very good actors. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, with certain people, you know, like if you've got a problem and you go up to them and, and they just look at you like they just don't care. Well, that's because they just don't care. <laughs> Sorry, but they don't. Actually, the only person you can trust is God. No one else. And this is what I'm finding in life. That God will always be the one that shows you how to do things. You know, I, I once had an incident uh, where I needed to put a lock on a door. And I didn't know how. So I asked God. I said, don't have anyone to help me. So he showed me, take out the, the little centerpiece. Because I'm not a man, so, you know, like I'm a bit dumb when it comes to things like that. 
And he said, take out that centerpiece. You've got a screwdriver there. And I was like, yeah. And he says, you've got a hammer. So now you've got a chisel. I was like, yeah, okay. He said, off you go. Measure it out and chisel away. I was like, okay then. <laughs> and then make a hole for the key because it was a mortise lock without the, the mechanism for the handle. So I was like, okay. And I did it. I was amazed. I was like, wow, thank you, Lord. <sighs> so these are the sort of things that God can do when you trust in him. But back to these people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the trouble is with the, the the people who are not of God is they, they have a sense of righteousness and a sense of kindness and a sense of love, but they're not the full qualities that dress up and give the uh, full furnishing of what the Lord represents. So this is a problem. Sometimes you can be misled and believe that they are from the Lord. They might even pretend to be God's children. But actually, you can't always tell. So what I recommend is to just shut up and watch because God will show you. That's what I found. But the thinking inside them, what I've had revealed to me, is because they don't feel that they are uh, sinners, they don't really feel that they should have to surrender to God because they don't want to acknowledge God because also if they acknowledge God, they'd have to acknowledge all the, the conduct of in, what they are doing because you see when you take on God and his principles and you become a child of God then you have to get rid of all those qualities of God's enemies we can't be both we can't sit on the fence so this is where the trials come in to see if you bend and if you don't bend then God will straighten your path out. But it can take a bit of time. Um, this is what I found. And what this does is it renews your faith and it also renews God's faith in you. And all your enemies get to see what a glorious, amazing God we have. So with these people, what they do and the way they think, is they don't want to face the things that they do wrong because in their mind the odd bit of stealing or lying is okay and this is where a slippery slope goes it's uh, on the film on the program murder she wrote the lady had said once your compass has been bent you'll never find true north again and so this is i believe the same once the person has decided that lying is acceptable, stealing is acceptable, then so also follows all the other criminal uh, conduct and the gloves are off because then it's a case of frightening people, intimidating them, making up lies, rounding up their enemies with them to go against God's children because they in their own mind are not doing anything wrong because the gloves are off and the compass is broken because their their paths are crooked. Because they don't surrender to God, they don't follow God's principles and therefore they've got their own principles. And this is where they actually worship themselves and see themselves as God. It says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Proverbs 13, colon 20. It's never been a truer word spoken about these these uh, idiots. <laughs> now, there's still hope for those people who won't surrender. Because what happens, I believe, when they come up against the child of God is they see the power of God. And often this happens with several of them. And they will mock God. Yeah, or they'll mock the person. Yeah. 
because they don't really believe that God can do anything. Because if you believe in God as well, you kind of get those people who think you're a little bit crazy, don't you? But, um, you see, when you've been through trials and you know that God's real, then you have no doubt. But obviously when you're going through the trial, you're still going to worry. You're still going to have all those anxieties because you wonder if you've upset God. This is the thing as well. But the thinking behind the, the opposition is also that they are possessed by a demonic type of entity because they are not saved. Therefore, they do not have the Holy Spirit inside them, and so they do not follow the laws of God or the principles of God, and they are not children of God because they have not accepted the covenant of the Lord, of the blood of Jesus Christ, which is, which is so important because once you've accepted the blood of Jesus, then you are a child of God, provided you change. And then you also have to shine your lamp. But if you've accepted the blood of Christ and you continue to behave like the scum, you know, the dirt, the algae, the evil, then there's no difference between you and the evil people. So there needs to be something that distinguishes God's people from from the evil ones. And this is following God's commandments, I believe. <laughs> so, what I found is God has given me many things over the last couple of weeks. Um, let me read some of it to you. Um, one of the things that happened was with John the Baptist. Now, he told Herod that his marriage to his brother's wife was not good in the eyes of God, and he wasn't happy. And then Herod wanted his head. Um, We put him in prison. Why? Because John the Baptist shined the light of the truth, of the principles of God. The sexual lusts and things and sleeping with people and marrying people, your brother's wife and all these other things, it's not good. Okay, so one of the other things I got was in 2 Peter, false teachers and their destruction. Why is this so important? Well, I believe... That anyone that claims to be a Christian by name, but not in principle, in the the way they conduct their lives, these are also false teachers because they don't follow God and they can lead God's people away. Okay. Because they've got a sense of God, but they haven't got the true God. They've only got what they've decided is God, and they won't believe the Bible either because... The gloves are off, you see. Crooked path. They're leaning on their own understanding, and they're in the darkness, so they cannot see in the darkness. And if they have darkness inside them, how deep's the darkness? <laughs> okay. So let's read to Peter. False teachers and their destruction, but there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereignty of the Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of the truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if 
He rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of lawless men. For that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment while continuing their punishment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the sinful nature and of their sinful nature and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, these men are not afraid to slander celestial beings. Yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not bring slanderous accusations against such beings in the presence of the Lord. But these men blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like brute beasts, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed. And like beasts, they too will perish. They will be paid back with harm for the harm they have done. Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in the broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, revealing in their pleasures, a reveling in their pleasures, while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed and a cursed brood. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Boer, who loved the wages of wickedness, but he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, a beast without speech, who spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These men are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them, for they mouth empty boastful words and by appealing to the lustful desires of sinful human nature they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error they promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of the depravity for a man is a slave of whatever has mastered him if they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were in the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of the righteousness than to have known it and then turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them... The proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit and a sow that it washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud. The next passage on this, I'd also like to read you. And this is the day of the Lord, which is coming very, very soon, I believe. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Saviour through your apostles. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? He promised, question mark, ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly men. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 
but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare, since everything will be destroyed in this way. What kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live a holy and godly life as you look forward to the day of the Lord and speed is its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes that, writes the same way in all his letters speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do not as the as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. It's so beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I tell you, God is good all the time. Praise the Lord. He is just the most glorious God. He does everything for me. <sighs> you know, when Jesus died on the cross for us, they mocked him, hey? And they stuck a knife in his side and they gave him vinegar to drink. Christ died for us all. He was totally humiliated. This is so that the Lord can be glorified on the day that he needs to be glorified. And so this is important to know as well. So, yes, if we need to look at all of the aspects of why the Lord is so righteous, why he is so kind, why does he do these things for us? Why? Well, because we are his children. Our, on this earth are wheat and there are also tares. And it talks about the harvest in the final days. And Satan sows his weeds right next to the wheat and in this way it's very tricky because we can't always distinguish but the way to do it is to ask the, the Lord to give you wisdom and he will demonstrate to you if you identify that someone is pretending to be a godly person and they truly are not then you really must detach either warn them or uh, you know, or stay away. Because in these final days, most of us are going through these trials on our own. And it is lonely, and we do want companionship with people. So it's very easy for us to seek this with other people, but not find it. And if we accept what is not righteous as a companion, then we become like those people, you know? So this is the lesson I've learned through my trials, but also to trust in God. Sometimes we don't understand why things happen. And the trials aren't just for you. The trials are the Lord testing those others around you. He's giving them a chance to come to the Lord. Then on the day, on the, in the valley of Jehoshaphat, when the Lord does the, ju uh, the judgment, he'll line everyone up and he'll say, but I sent so and so, and I told them to speak to you and you ignored them. You wouldn't listen to them. So there's no excuse. 
Because I asked God, I said, why do you allow all of this to happen? He said, oh, so that they know for themselves who they are. Otherwise, they'd say, but I would never do that. And so, in this way, God lets them perform and demonstrate who they really are. Because your deeds do write your own deeds for your inheritance, which is shortly to be awarded to us. So, we can look forward to that. But the wages of sin is death. It is. And so, this will happen to those who are not following God. Don't you think that's amazing? So, those people who are following God are written into the book of life and have an eternal kingdom to look forward to. Peace and joy and love. Heaven will be totally wow. And uh, goodness knows exactly where we are within everything because we're told that this earth will be destroyed. But we're also told there's going to be a new earth and a new heaven. But we're also told that Jesus will reign on earth for a thousand years. But this also is something I, I ask about. And I think, well, has this already happened because they've changed our history? Nothing, as you know, that's been told to us is true. So they've rewritten history. <laughs> but I've already covered all that in many other sermons. And I'm sure you don't want me to bore you with all of that. But one thing so important for you to know, God has put you here for a purpose. Yes, really. And when you're a child of God, nothing, nothing in the world can touch you. And you have to believe it. And it's very hard sometimes because it can seem so scary. (laughs) But I know that the Lord is with me. And I want you to take comfort that the Lord is with you also. But remember about having a relationship with God, about regular chats with Him, talking to Him while you're driving to the shop, while you're, you know, in the supermarket, asking what what to wear, what to cook for dinner, these sort of things. That's what I found. Hmm. The Lord has got so many things in store for all of us. The other thing you've got to remember is the saints will be judging all all of the nations. And so, what does that mean? Well, a saint is going to be one of the people who, well, have accepted Jesus and have lived in the eyes of God in a good way and followed the laws of God. And in this way, they will have had trials and tests so that when they come to judge the other people. They'll have some understanding of why the temptation was so great for those people. And I think that's a good thing because it's better to also come to God about being judged. You know, if you've done something wrong, you know, when David had bedded Bathsheba, she was still married to you, uh, is it Uriah? Yeah. So, and so this is a problem. So the first child had to be, um, well, not allowed to live. And David cried to God, please, please, I really want this child to live. But David had to be punished. But also, if that child had been born into the world, it would have been a hated child because it was born, made while, uh, you know, Bathsheba was still married. So this, I think, is so important. Very, very hard, I think, for people because we can't be partly right and then receive blessings from God as well. So there's no sitting on the fence. There's no in-between. It's either black or white. You're either with me or against me. With me or against me? With me or against me? And if you're against me, you're against my Father who sent me. It's really simple. And this is why Jesus says, you must have unity. We must all together have unity in Christ. If we don't, then we're going to have problems. Because there's no division. It's only with the devil that division is caused. Because he comes with darkness. 
and then you can't see. <laughs> That's the only reason people get divided, because they don't know which way to go. And they have disagreements, because they're not of the same mind, the same heart, same thinking. So in everything we do, we have to recheck who we are and pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is what I'm learning, and to realize that we are nothing without the Lord. And it's only because of the Lord that I'm alive, and you as well, and also the wicked. You see, the nice thing about knowing that the Lord's in control is he can deal with people in his way. You know, when you go and take revenge on someone, you lower yourself down to their level. It also shows that you've got anger in your heart, and that's another doorway for Satan to be angry. Fear is another one. So by having faith, you lose all of those qualities. <laughs> and by trusting in God, who is the author and authority above all authorities, you're acknowledging who he is in trusting him and going, yeah, okay, whatever happens, I know you're in charge and you'll sort this out. And God will give you understanding and wisdom and everything. I think that covers everything I wanted to say. Um, if you're lacking faith, yeah, then start reading uh, James. Get James out and read James. Um, get Exodus out and read that. Or get the Bible series and watch it on YouTube. Just make time. Make time to do these things. You know, if you're with someone who says they're of God and they're not, by flicking their eyes when you pray or something like this, you know, just take note. Don't point it out because the Lord's showing you these things. And secretly they'll mock you behind your back and they'll mock God and they'll do something and then God will get cross. So we just have to surrender everything to God mm -hmm. we really have got the most amazing God imagine if we had a God that wasn't righteous and true we'd be in deep trouble the fact that God is so righteous and true and full of glory he's so holy you can't even look upon him that's the amazing thing you know Moses when he used to go in the tabernacle in the tent and talk to the Lord he would glow. <laughs> and when he walked out the tent, all of the tribes would stand up. And then when he'd go in the tents, they'd all sit down again. <laughs> you know? And God went around with us by a fire by uh, night and a cloud by day. And when the clouds started to move in the day, the tribes of Judah would get ready and start moving. I think it was actually... Yeah, it was the, um, the Levites who moved all of the tabernacle first, actually. First of all, they'd go with the cloud, and then all of the tribes of Judah would go. Um, and then Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Reuben. Yes. So, yeah, not Benjamin. Reuben. Uh, Simeon. Yeah, uh, yeah. So and then all the tribes of, uh, of Joseph uh, would go, and then the Danites and and all of those. So it would go in a certain order. But anyway, the Lord would go with the cloud first, and then they'd all go off first, uh, go off after him, and then the tent would be put up first, and then all the tribes would arrive after that. I think that's so organised and so beautiful. And then later, it talks about the trumpets being made, you know. But before that, they didn't have trumpets. And so I think a lot of these things are reflective of what happens in this world as well, and what happens today. Um, wherever you go, whatever you do, wherever you are, I want you to know that I love you. 
and that God loves you and he is with you right now. So if you're going through a trial, repeat after me, I have no fear. I have the Lord with me. The Lord is with me. I will fear no evil. I trust in the Lord. And, you know, let's read Psalm 91, because I think that's one of my favorite Psalms. <laughs> Look at my Bible. You know, when things happen as well, the Lord does his thing. He does show off, right? You know, it's a bit like a duck on water. You can't see the legs moving. Or swan. You can't see the mo legs moving, but it doesn't mean the legs aren't moving. You can see it gliding graciously across the pond. Well, that's because it's moving along so graciously in its own way, and you can't see it. And so, I think that's really amazing. I'm just going to try and find Psalm 91. Two seconds. This uh, sermon is off the cuff today, so <laughs> um, that's why I haven't got it all ready. Um, diddly done. Yeah, Psalm 91. Let's go. Praise the Lord, full of mercy, kindness, grace, and love. Okay. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and ramparts. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near you, near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpents. I will protect him for the, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I think it's so beautiful. I'd also like to read Psalm 23. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet, quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> so just know that the Lord loves you so much. He's actually just waiting for you to hand everything over and to pray to him about everything because then he can provide the solution and the miracles because he does provide miracles. Um, he performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. Job 5 colon 9, the number of times the Lord has stepped in when I've been like, oh, this is crazy, what's going on here? And this one, 
then you shall call and the Lord will answer you. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. In Isaiah 58, colon 9. We have one more here. And this one is, God promises to make something good out of the storms that bring devastation to your life. Romans 8, colon 28. I want you to know nothing happens by accident. It really, ha- nothing at all. Yeah, and God is like a giant traffic controller. Even all the things that are happening in the world, the evil, it's God's way of uh, letting people see what evil is. So they turn from wickedness and seek righteousness. So with all of the transgender movement, the more this happens, more like normal families just are really re- repulsed by it. And they don't want to send their children to school because they're getting taught about perversion and bestiality and boys having sex with boys. And they taught about all of these things and it's normalized, uh, this weird perverted sex and boys can be girls and girls can be boys and all of those things. See, the more this happens, the more people are going to say, no, I don't like this. And the opposite to evil, of course, is God. Because the devil is dead, lived backwards, yeah, and God is life, God is I am. And AI is the opposite to God. So any, everything is actually to do with AI as well. Uh, but if Jesus is the truth, the life, the light, uh, the word, and the author of life, then AI, as in Microsoft Word, has to be the opposite of that, a version of God. Wants to be like God, wants to rule from the temple like God. Bill Gates opens the gates of hell. Yeah? I believe this. (laughs) And the devil is dead and he's in the darkness. um, And he cannot see. And everything is lies, not truth, opposite. And hatred and wickedness. But with Jesus, it's all about truth and love. Truth and love come together. They're like joined together in unity. As it tells me in the Bible, it says... Love bears, believes, hopes, endures all things. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, colon 7 to 8. This is why uh, John and Peter say that you must love your brothers. You must love your brothers. Because if you do not love them who you have seen, how can you love God who you have not seen? And for me, I understand this. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by their hand. Psalm 37, colon 24. And here's another thing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not, it is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking and it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts and always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13. So it's all about love and being in unity because that binds us all together. And that's the opposite to hate, I think. Well, yeah, <laughs> in my thinking. And that's another thing I've noticed. People sometimes, they'll start off liking me and then they will hate me. And I have no idea. Like, they don't even know me very well and they hate me. Well, it's not me they hate. It's Christ inside me that they hate because Christ is risen inside us all. His Holy Spirit now dwells inside us. That means we have authority to cast out demons, hexes, curses, witchcraft, Satan and his cronies in the name of Jesus. And that's why they don't like us, because we're shining the light. And if you don't understand this, then you won't know that you've got authority either. So you need to take your authority. And the only way to do this is to surrender to God, meek and humble, redo the sinner's prayer. I believe because Jesus is the daily sacrifice and the daily bread. So I believe that we are meant to do the daily prayer um, to renew our covenant with the Lord so that he knows that we are a child of God. You know when you first come to God, usually you're broken or something, I find. So when that happens, you see, you've got nothing else to lose. And I think God likes it when this happens. Because 
it makes you surrender. And it is, it's about surrendering. Make God your vessel. Be in the Lord. Also, James talks about the tongue. Very interesting is the tongue. It's like a rudder of a boat. (laughs) It really directs the boat. (laughs) I was like, wow, this is so interesting. So be careful with your mouth. If in doubt, just keep it closed for a time um, and ask the Lord for wisdom what to say. Because the Lord says, it'll be me that speaks for you, inside you. He'll give you all the words to say. When your enemies come up against you, you just need to stand and pray to God in your head to say, God, I've got this problem. What can I do? And the Lord will deal with it. He will. I think we should close with a, with a prayer. It's Aisha from God FM. If you want to find us, you can find us on Podbean, Spotify, Amazon, Samsung, Chrome. Um, so many. We're on Rumble as well now, YouTube, uh, TikTok odd videos if they're shorter than 10 minutes we'll go on there as well um but pod pod bean is really good for for just listening to all this the uh the sermons and spotify which you can get look for us as god fm news on on those channels um and uh you can email me admin at godfm.org.uk on telegram we've got many channels god fm news god fm bible school god fm sermons and god's home school network as well got it for media for all our media creations and uh you know if there's anything you need if you want some picture frames made or bible sent to you call me or contact me and i'll help you i'll send what i can if you need someone to talk to let me know and i'll try and be there for you we also have a whatsapp group which is on a request basis uh, and then you request to join, and then I can join you to that as well. All right? So let's close. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a glorious day. Thank you, Father. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you came to earth and died on the cross for my sins. I know that I'm a sinner, and I know that you are the Son of God. I pray forgiveness for my sins. I believe in you, and I wish to follow you. In Jesus' mighty name, I am washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. I cast out all demons, hexes, curses, witchcraft, Satan and his cronies in the name of Jesus Christ. And if my family have followed pagans, witchcraft, Satanism, Freemasons, or the Masons, or any tarot readers, Ouija boards, or any pagan festivals, I ask that you forgive us now and break any chains of generational curses and remove those generational curses in the name of Jesus. I am washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hmm. I will follow you all the days of my life, Lord. I pray that I'll be pleasing to you and that uh, you will look down and show favor on me in these times and that it may be your name that will be glorified in my life and everything I do that I may not be an embarrassment and you will scatter my enemies and bring them to account. I pray in the name of Jesus, all of their schemes will be revealed and I thank you for loving me, a wretch like me. (sighs) I pray that you will provide everything that we need financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, for our homes and children, families, for our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world. We all come together in unity. Even though we're not together, we are together in the Spirit. And the Lord loves us. And we are constructing the temple currently. So we've got to work on ourselves. I pray that you will make sure that everyone's ready, Lord, for the big day that is coming, not far from now. I pray that uh, all the demons will be petrified and flee when they see us and that we'll shine the light of Jesus, that others may come to know the truth of the gospel and Jesus Christ and also be saved. Keep us on your path and walk before us, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit fill us with wisdom and understanding to navigate this strange world and to, to be with us wherever we go. 
as it says, your burden is light and your yoke is easy. And we take that. We hand all our problems to you, Jesus. Please fill us with peace, joy and happiness and love and understanding and peace and adoration of you, Lord, and righteousness and truth and Jesus. That That's all we seek. We don't seek the fleshly things because we're only guests on this earth. And we pray now that you will give us all the strength that we need to get through these difficult times. I thank you, Jesus, for loving a wretch like me. In Jesus' mighty name, it's Aisha from God FM. I hope you all have an amazing day. Take care. Bye.